Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. And you find us at a very busy Burton Wood Services on the M62 near Warrington. Motorway is just over that way, 100 yards. So the background noise levels are quite ferocious here. So bear with us on this one. But we're at the Tesla supercharger. Now, these are the V2 superchargers. Uh, so these are the second generation uh, from when they started about 10 years ago. Uh, but these are the V2s. So cars appearing here, you'll see some of the cars here. And there's uh, Model Y, Model 3 and Model S's here. And the Model S's will all have the old Tesla proprietary socket. Uh, so they will use one of the cables. All of the uh, Model Y's and the Model 3's, they will be using the CCS2 because that's what they've got. So any Tesla can charge here. Uh, don't need any adapters, don't need anything. So these are the V2's. Now they are shared power. So you've got the uh, power supplies here, uh, but power is shared between two, two chargers. So if we look in a minute at the front of the chargers, you'll see there are letters on them, numbers and letters. You'll have a 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B. And the power supply to each of the numbers, the one, the twos, the threes, is 150 kilowatts. But it's shared between two bays. So 1A and 1B will use the same 150 kilowatts. So when it's really busy, like it is at the moment, what you'll find is you're unlikely to get a very good uh, high-speed charging experience. Now it is intelligent sharing, so it doesn't just split it 50-50. What will happen is if one car has just arrived, got a very low state of charge, that will get proportionally much higher percentage of the 150 kilowatts. If someone is just nearing the end of their charging session, the, the, the power being provided might be down as little as 20 or 30 kilowatts. So that's all they'll take. So a, uh, one car could be taking 120, another one could be taking 30. So they are intelligent. And as people come and go, that level will, will, will change. But whatever happens, that it is a shared experience. And that means that you're never going to get the full speed. When they go up uh, shortly, we're going to look at the V3 chargers. They're 250 kilowatts, not shared. So whenever you go there, you know what you're going to get. So what we have here is an amazingly busy uh, charger. Uh, we've come here deliberately at a busy time and that's to show what it's like. And for anyone who says, um, I, never had, I never queue up and I've broken the rule. No, I never queue up to charge my car. I've got plenty of charge and well over 50%. I can get home on what I've got. So I'm here purely to film, not to charge. And I personally would never charge at this time of day. First of all, it's busy. But the main thing is, it's dearer. Tesla have peak periods, off-peak periods, and busy chargers have a super off-peak period. Uh, and the difference could be 50%. So uh, peak here could be 60 or 70p. Super off-peak could be down at 25, 30p. So why uh, would I charge at the peak rate when I don't need to? So that's just a, an aside. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna have a look at some of the uh, control. This is the communications. Uh, so the substation is just over there. Now the substation is where the incoming power comes. Effectively, it's straight off the, the grid ring main and that's the 11,000 volts. So the power will go into there and inside there will be a transformer which drops it down to the 480 volts which the Tesla charges like. This one here almost certainly is the communications one. So this will have the Wi-Fi, this will have the payment method, this will have uh, communication uh, for all of, the, uh, all of the chargers. These are the switches. Uh, so when someone plugs in, it's the contactor. So these will control it. And unlike GridServe, where we were recently, which has one of these for every charger, Tesla in the early days had just a few of these for 12 chargers and the later ones now they've just done away with them all together and they have the substation they have the communication station and that's it so these just become terminals then so what we have these are working hard at the moment you can hear the fans going not going to get any closer it is high, high voltage electricity totally safe but i just don't go any closer than that but that's what it is they're working hard you can feel the feel the warmth coming away from that. Um, 
So these are working flat out. Oh, we've actually got a spare bay. Now we were here, been here about 20 minutes and, and we've still got cars parked, but we now have a spare bay. So this is a very, very busy charger. Now, when we go above this, or when we go to one shortly, we'll go to the uh, V3s, they're very different. The services here is really interesting. Well, first of all, we've got the motorway in the background. We did approach it without going on the motorway. So this is um, a very different layout. This is just off the motorway. Uh, it's very busy. We've got a coach station there uh, with individual bays and a cover over it and obviously a lorry park in the background. So this is a very, very busy location. The very busy motorway here as well. So what we have here is lorry park coaches and then the services up in the background. So with the services, it's, a, it's quite a modern design. And the services here, you've got KFC, you've got Starbucks, you've got a shop, toilets, uh, seating area, coffee area. Uh, it's got all the usual facilities, so we'll go and have a look at that in a minute. Um, Burton Wood, uh, it's got memories for me because uh, when I was still at school, I joined the, um, the Air Training Corps uh, as a cadet, and it was at Burton Wood where the Americans had an Air Force base, and it's very, very close to here. And from that base, we used to come out at the weekends, and we used to go gliding. Uh, so this was back in the late 60s and they had, I remember flying Kirby Cadets, I remember flying Sedbergs, which are two-seaters parallel, Kirby Cadet is a single-seater. Um, and this was the first time, I was only in my teens, this was the first time I went solo in a glider, well in any aircraft. Uh, so this has got quite a lot of memories and I remember this motorway being built. Uh, it wasn't here when I was flying, uh, it was the A62 at the time. Uh, so I've spent a lot of time around here flying around the skies many, many years ago. So it's all changed now, very busy route. Uh, we're going to head from here. There are several other superchargers on the M62. It's a very busy tra Transpennine route. Well, these are the contactors for the supercharger. Those are not actually chargers. They are purely dis dis dispensers. Uh, there's no circuitry uh, controlling it. It's all done from here. These at the moment working really hard. There's a huge amount of heat being pumped out from these. Fans are running really, really powerfully. Okay, well, one of the first things you notice with the V2s is you get two cables. So this cable is a CCS2. This cable is the Tesla proprietary. It looks like a Type 2, but it's DC, 150 kilowatts. So you'll notice when you walk along the row, who's using what? Why are the two cables? Well, we're looking here, this is a Model S and the Model S does not have CCS2. My Model S doesn't have CCS2. So the Model S will use the proprietary Tesla charger, uh, which provides exactly the same power. So that was a Model S using the bottom charger, the Type 2. If we look at the next one, this is a, a Model 3. And the Model 3 is not using the bottom charger, he's using the CCS2. CCS2 is what's fitted on all Model 3s, Model Ys. Uh, so there's a difference there between the Model S and the more modern cars. We've just got here a Model Y pulled in, and when he opens the port, you'll see that one's a CCS2 socket. Right, well, the thing I notice here is just the noise. Uh, we were earlier on at uh, Park Royal in the grounds of a hotel with the V1 chargers, and that's beautifully peaceful, quiet, calm, lovely setting, lovely grounds. You come here and it's just noise everywhere. We've got coaches and lorries in the background, coach station here, we've got cars, and this is a very, very busy charger. It's really nice to see a very well-established uh, etiquette here. There's no fighting. People will pull in in front of the chargers if they're all occupied. And as uh, one becomes available, the correct one will just take its place. So when someone arrives, if it's full, 
they will look at what cars are here, they'll park alongside or anywhere they can, but they know their place in the queue. And then as cars start pulling out, the cars will just start slotting in. We've been here a little while, and for most of the time it's been full, uh, but at the moment we've got just uh, two chargers vacant at the moment, and we've got no queue left, apart from my car, which we're not queuing for charging today. So this seems to be working really well. When we first arrived, there was a Tesla engineer here, and he was hoping to charge his car uh, to get onto a job, but he found the charger totally full, and when we arrived, there were four cars queuing. So he immediately just parked up his car and started directing the traffic, just helping people. He would go and talk to the people who were charging, ask them what state of charge, do they need to stay any longer? And some of the ones who were 70 or 80% uh, didn't need to charge any longer. So he very politely asked them if they would leave, and many of them did. Uh, if you don't need to charge to 100%, don't do it. The last 10 or 20% is agonizingly slow. And if you've got three or four cars queuing up, waiting, it's really not polite and not correct if you just insist on staying there for the last 20% of your battery. If you don't need it, just move on. Uh, you can come back another day or charge. It just means you're going to charge an extra 20 mile earlier next time. So the system works very well. It does, uh, it does flow very nicely here. Um, it is one of the slower chargers. And the trouble is, these are, these, this system is a downward spiral because when you get just four or five cars in here, all the chargers will be running flat out at 150 kilowatts, and it means they'll get very fast charging experience and be on the way quite quickly. As soon as you get all the intermediate spaces filling up, all of a sudden, all of the chargers slow down to uh, anywhere around about half speed. So it means that everyone's experience then slows down, and that means that they will spend far longer here charging, and that means if new cars arrive, they will be in a queue. So. My message is always the same, try and avoid peak time. Peak time you pay more and you often end up with a queue. Uh, just pointing out here, uh, all of the V2s have two cables. One is a CCS2 plug, the other one is a Tesla proprietary plug, looks like a Type 2. So on this particular charger, the one that's missing is the uh, CCS2. And that tells me that the car here is either a Model 3 or a Model Y, which only have CCS2. The bottom one is for cars like mine, the Model S, the Model X, and they only have the Tesla proprietary Type 2 system, uh, charge, uh, plug. So it means that you can tell which car's there by whichever plug's being used. But what it means is that the V2s and the V1s, any Tesla can pull into any of these chargers and nobody ever needs an adapter. When we get onto the, uh, the V3s, which are CCS only, then the cars like mine, the Model S and the Model X, which only have the Type 2 type socket, uh, do then start needing an adapter. Model 3s, Model Ys never need an adapter. So, having put your car on charge, what do you do? The very first thing you've got to do here is get your laundry out. They've got to wash and dry. It's a self-service laundrette. And these are popping up absolutely everywhere. Now, I don't know, I haven't tried one of these and I don't know if I ever will. I don't carry laundry about with me. I just wonder how long a wash cycle takes. Because if your car takes 40 minutes, but they take an hour and a half, I can't see anyone sitting around for an hour and a half. So I'm assuming these are ultra fast uh, laundrettes. Well, thanks very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe and click the notification bell so we can notify you next time we launch a video. And a massive thank you to all our Patreon supporters. It is your support that enables us to go out and make these videos for you. So thank you very much for your contribution. I'm Dave.